Good evening and salam Ibu Pertiwiku. President Donald Trump has been taking steps to isolate and battle Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro, who is holding power with help from other countries, including Cuba, China and Russia. The new policy against Havana could deal a severe blow to Cuba's efforts to draw foreign investment and spawn international trade disputes between the U.S. and Europe. The administration official who provided details of the shift spoke on condition of anonymity ahead of the official announcement Wednesday by the State Department. Johanna Tablada, Cuba's Deputy Director of U.S. Affairs, said on Twitter, before they try to euphorically ride a wave of wickedness and lies, they should take a dose of reality. The world has told John Bolton and the U.S. government to eliminate the criminal blockade against Cuba and the Helms-Burton Act. Phil Fetus, director of the Arlington, Virginia-based Cuba Research Center, who advocated for closer relations with Cuba and has consulted for U.S. companies looking to invest, said it will harm prospective investment in Cuba. It will not cause people who are invested in Cuba already to pull out now. The U.S. officials said the administration also plans to start enforcing the section of the act that allows the U.S. to deny entry visas to Cubans and citizens of other countries involved in trafficking in the confiscated property. Tens of millions of Indonesians voted in presidential and legislative elections Wednesday after a campaign that pitted the moderate incumbent against an ultra-nationalist former general whose fear-based rhetoric warned that the country would fall apart without his strongman leadership. About 193 million people were eligible to vote in elections that will decide who leads the world's most populous Muslim-majority nation and third-largest democracy after India and the U.S. Indonesians are voted for Senate and national, provincial and district legislatures. The elections are a huge logistical exercise with more than 800,000 polling stations and 17 million people involved in ensuring they run smoothly. The presidential race is a choice between five more years of the steady progress achieved under Indonesia's first president from outside the Jakarta elite, incumbent President Joko Jokowi Widodo, or electing Prabowo Subianto, who was a special forces general during the era of the Suharto military dictatorship. Subianto voted not long after 8 a.m. in Bogor in West Java province, one of his strongholds of support, and told reporters he was confident of winning despite trailing in the polls. Widodo's campaign highlighted his progress in poverty reduction and improving Indonesia's inadequate infrastructure with new ports, toll roads, airports and mass rapid transit. The latter became a reality last month in chronically congested Jakarta with the opening of a subway. Well, that's all the news for now. I am Razi Ahmad and thank you for watching.